Hey there, hope you had a spooktacular Halloween. I know I did. Spent the entire time just running around a place called Crazy House going crazy, obviously. And covered in fake blood as well. Literally I spent this morning just washing off loads and loads of fake blood. Just gets everywhere. I think I still got a bit of makeup on actually, just on, on the eyes. A bit, a bit here and there. Oh well. To be honest, I'm going out to another party tonight, so I should have just stayed in makeup all day, but that could have been really embarrassing because I had to go down to the city centre to sort some stuff out and doing a walk of shame still in my Halloween gear would have been a bit interesting to be honest with you. I didn't do that much to honest, my costume, I just ripped some old shirts up, covered it in blood and um, did some like white face paint and grey as well you know. So a typical sort of zombie but I've been too busy which brings me on to my next topic for the video. It's been a hell of a long time since I've uploaded to YouTube, and I'm I'm really sorry, I really am. But hopefully, hopefully, I can explain and sort of justify my actions because I think it's been so long now. It's it's probably a crime. I've been back at university now since the middle of September, and while there's always a bit of a bumpy transitional period between being at home and going to uni, this one just really has been a mad couple of weeks. It's been mad non-stop work since I got here to be honest with you. This is my new room, you can see it in all its glory. I'm in a nice sort of area in the um, city centre, well nice-ish anyway, it'll do the trick. You can see out there, it's a lovely rainy day, there's cars, there's a bus stop, perfect for when I can't bother to go anywhere, I'm just like I'll just get on the bus and it'll be all, it'll be all jolly. Hello, I'm the HMS fan. I have no idea what my purpose in life is. I just sit here non-stop and what the hell am I talking about? Now I do English at uh, University of Liverpool. I'm in my final year, which is always manic. Like, I think it's something like 70% of my overall mark for my degree is made up of work that I do this year. And because I do English, there is a fair bit of reading involved. I've had to do Shakespeare, bits of Victorian, of Northern literature. I've had to do all sorts. It's been non-stop madness. The other week I was gonna upload a video or rather I was going to record one, and my lecturer just sent me 2,000 words during a weekend, and I was like, that's my plans for the weekend gone then. I wanted to make a proper update for you guys as well, and, and just every time I've tried to set aside a period where I can record, or film, or do something for YouTube, life just gets in the way. That's not the only thing too, because uh, this year I am the co-head of LS Radio, which is the student radio station for the University of Liverpool. Now, I was warned about the workload for running the station and I just shrugged it off at the time. I didn't really fully appreciate how much work it would be until I came back to uni this year and I've been thrown in the deep end. There's just been so much to sort out for it. Like, we did an outside broadcast at the um, Liverpool University Graduate Careers Festival, which was so much fun, but there was a lot of work involved in organising that. Same for our official launch party. And aside from all the events as well, there's just the maintenance and the admin and the constant email. It is a wee bit stressful at times, but ultimately I'd love to work in radio after university, so, you know, I've got to keep at it. And it's been a roller coaster which I'm loving so far, so I want to keep on riding it. That's a pretty cool metaphor, I think. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of workload for LS Radio and other commitments within the university, I've had to let YouTube slide, which was a real shame because recently I hit 8,000 subscribers. Girl, how is that even possible? I wanted to give you guys a proper thank you, a proper big thumbs up, cheers for sticking around with me these last few years because I really do appreciate you guys watching my videos and sharing and liking and commenting and all the amazing stuff you do because YouTube is so much more than just one person posting a video and you know that being it it's a community where people come together to watch other videos and you know share their favorites and their opinions and I love that aspect of YouTube and I love the fact that you guys do you know it, it was like a little bit irritating sometimes but ultimately I, lo I love the fact that you guys are just like where have you been? Why aren't you uploading videos? It's nice to know that you guys do care, ultimately. So I thought I would make my return on YouTube by doing something a bit different. This year, Spy of a Dragon, it's 15 years old. It was released, I believe, on the 23rd of October in the UK back in 1998. So it's now 15 years of age 
the original game now. For some people that might not seem like much, but for me, it's quite a big deal. Spyro was a phenomenal part of my childhood, like most video games were, but Spyro it always just stood out for me. Bit of a backstory for you guys. I first got into gaming when I went round to my grandparents' house and my grandmother was playing Crash Bandicoot. I just looked at her and I thought, hmm, I can do that. And I started playing it and I just absolutely loved it. And I was just begging my parents like, please, please, please get me a PS1. I know that I'll never see the light of day again, but I promise you, I will be so happy and I'll love you forever. So my parents got me one in early 1999 and I had Crash Bandicoot 2 which was an awesome game and that, that random Disney Hercules platform which is pretty good too but then for my 6th birthday 4th April 1999 I got Spy of the Dragon for the PS1 and it just blew my mind open the thing about Spy of the Dragon though is that 15 years later from its release I can still pick it up and even after all these years of playing it, it still excites me just as much as when I first played it back in 1999 and that is why it remains my favourite video game of all time. There's just so much I love about it, the lush graphics, the fantastic soundtrack by Stuart Copeland, but most importantly there's the gameplay. So many games these days just spoon feed you the gameplay, like there's instructions on how to do everything and if you die it's okay, you just respawn in the same place a few seconds later. Back on PS1 when Spyro the Dragon was around, there was none of that. You know, if you died you started again, you worked your way up, you know, and it's just the non-linear side of it. Like you just get dropped into a level and you have to rescue the dragons, collect the gems and rescue all the dragon eggs as well. Those three things are the three things you have to do throughout the entire game, and that's it. They don't tell you anything else at all. They just get on with it, and it's amazing in that sense. You, you, you can go to whatever levels you want to, you can just, you can just, you start like in a green field in artisan world, and you can just go off and do whatever you want. And I love that about Spire of Dragon. There's not a case of have to go here or there or up there or down there, you know, sort of thing. You go and do what you want. So for this, my 8,000 subscribers, thank you, celebration. I thought I'd take you through my favorite level from my favorite video game. Let's do this, guys. Okay, so here we are, my favorite level, Jacques in the Dreamweaver's world. There are some fantastic levels in this world. It's the fifth world in Spy the Dragon, and it's definitely my favorite world just because there's so many amazing things to be found. Um, but this level just takes the cake. It trumps the lot, in my opinion. Um, now, most of you will know how terrible I am with pronunciation. No lie, I used to think this was just pronounced Jack Q's. But no, it's Jacques, which is French for Jack. So, seeing as we share the same name, it's no wonder I like this level so much. I mean, just look at it though as well. The nightmarish landscape in there, God, it's very foreboding, isn't it? It's like, God, we don't want to go in there. It's like, God, better get away. No, no. But actually, I've said that, it's sort of purple, which is Spyro's class. Maybe he's like, oh, I feel a bit at home here. Fire and everything like that. In we go! Confronting Jacques. I've not been playing the game through properly, really. I've just been trying to get up to this point in time so I can share with you this level. Into it we go! Now, first thing about it is the music. Good lord, it's a fantastic piece, isn't it? Seriously. It's got a pulsing beat without being overwhelming. It's just, oh, I love, 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 love it! Seriously, I could just sit in this level doing nothing listening to this music. But thankfully, I've got the soundtrack now through Galbadia Hotel, I think it is. Um, so, the enemies. These grey ones are called Armoured Horrors. And they're nasty little things, aren't they? Um, and then you've got the big bulky ones, which are called giant pansies, which are wearing skirts as well. I mean, what on earth is that all about? They're just inspiring, aren't they? I mean, think about that for the imagination. Those massive pincers, and then you've got the, the flowers as well, which like are just completely out of touch with this sort of lava crazy environment. I mean, look at it. Definitely wouldn't want to fall down there. It's just horrible. Horrible indeed. Um, and it's seriously, these monsters are the sort of things that you would see in nightmares. I'm, I'm surprised that these guys have not featured in my nightmares yet. But just look at them. Just big, scary, and stuff. Like the flowers, like, what's that for? Like a nightmare garden as well, or something like that? Like, ha, ah, flower power in your face. Uh, get along here first, let's get all these gems. And you've got the fools as well. Fools running around going crazy. Oh, gems, gems. Oh, no, I'm not going to get that one again. There we go. There we go. 
I haven't done this commentary thing in a while now, actually. So this is this is nice. Get back into it. Slowly easing my way back into back into YouTube. I do like though how it holds its skirt. Like it's proper. Like you know. Let's be sensible here. Oh no, the green one. Oh no. I'll get it in a minute. Oh for God's sake. What am I like? It has taken take a minute to just look at this level. It's got a fantastic castle layout. So it's proper like it just it's just begging to be explored. But and once again, I think as I said earlier, like the thing about Spyro is that it does make you think. And there's nothing here when you get to here that tells you where to go. You can, you, you can happily go here left or right. The game tells you nothing. It lets you get on with it and do your own thing. So what we've got here on the left then is a pillar. Just waiting for, oh, for God's sake, oh, I have to start again. Well, come on, you fool. Be, be, be kind, fool. Be kind, be kind to me. Don't fall off the edge either. That could be embarrassing. Very embarrassing indeed. On to that. He just sits there doing his time thing. Now, here we go. This giant pillar. Serious look at it. This over there, that over there is a dragon, obviously. And it's locked away in crystal, and that's just, you know, that's not very nice, is it, really? Um. There are several dragons throughout the Spyro series that you can see, but you can never quite get to them. They're always there, out of sight, um, and they're just so annoying in that sense. We're well, not annoying, but also encouraging, because you can see it, and it just makes your mind think, like, how on earth do I get over there? Um, and the same with this one. You can see it over there, you're like, okay, I can't glide there, I've got to get onto that. And it's, I spent forever just trying to jump onto it like this, like going, come on, got to get up onto it, try again. No, and then I'd go up to this one over here to the higher ledge. I'd like, I'd just do a really big jump, hold X down. No, I can't, and I fell. And it's that sort of thing, you know, that makes me love this level more than anything because you really have to just think for, think about it. It took me a while to figure out that I have to get this full, and then run over back over here, get the other full, and I'm sort of concentrating now. Go onto the platform. Let it go up, that's just about enough time. See, it gives you breathing space to think for yourself, and that's what I love about it. And this, I mean, finally get over here. Here's Dragon All Explorer. You're like, yes, I've been waiting for this moment for such, so long, such a long time now. I'm going to rescue it. What, what's it going to say? Thank you for releasing me. Oh, what a disappointment, honestly. I mean, seriously, he could have said anything. He could have said, you know, like something really meaningful. Oh, it's such a letdown. Uh, but you know, you still got it in your collection now, so that's just like, yeah, that, 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 that's nice as well. Look over here first this time. And so then you've got this whole new section that I hadn't explored before, and it was just like, oh my god, wow, here we go. This is what I've been waiting for. Because it, it was like, you know, it was it was several playthroughs into Spyro, like several times of playing Spyro and trying to get into this area, that, but I eventually got to here, and I was just like, wow, the possibility of what I could see. And most of it, of course, is just gems, but it's still just... Oh, I'm running out of words to express how much I love this level. And even the fire. There's blooming fire everywhere. Lava and all that sort of stuff. All that jazz. And it's just amazing. You've got even more of these crazy creatures onto here. Go and burn them. Like, burn! Die! Die! No, no. Die! That, that was a fail. That was a fail. Oh, I massively failed that. I've got a bit of a life here. Lives are always good. Um, I'm... Them, I think there might be a code for 99 lives, but I can't ever remember it, so... Meh. The focus is on Jacques, not, um, not 99 lives. <laughs> I've got 99 problems, but lives ain't one. Oh my god, I died again! No, I don't know, I, I, didn't, I didn't die, rather, but I failed. I failed miserably. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. You had to sort of just comb around it, slide it, surely. There we go. Found it off quite nicely. So yeah, it's a, it's such a reward to be able to, you know, you feel so satisfied when you finally get over here, just like, thank God for that. Spent blooming eternity trying to do it. And to finally get it is just such a nice feeling. So then you've got like even more areas to here, you've got some of, the, some of the platforming here is where you have to get the glide spot on. Because that is just, you know, if, if you fall down there, you're doomed. Thank God for Jack having wings, but poor old Spider hasn't even got a bloody good pair of wings. Useless. I'll, give it, I'll, 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 I'll leave it. We had the falls as well, but it's they're fun as well, you know, because you just, you just t chase them forever, and you fall off the edge like that, and down I go, plummeting to my death. What am I like, eh? Um, you know what? I think I'm just gonna have to skip that area actually. I want to get on and explore the other bits of the level. Um, 
Actually, no, 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 no. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. This is a serious video. It's probably gonna be a long one, but what the heck? That was perfect timing. That was. Seeing so getting to this cage over here. Well, not cage, but cave. That's the dicky bird that I'm looking for. And oh, did it. Whoops. <laughs> it's, it, it's, I think that's what they say. They say whoops. Like, oh dear. That was a bad error of judgment on my part there. And so I climb over here, there's even more of these creatures. And the music just loops around, but it's, the music is just, you know, keeps you on your toes as well. It sets the, the pace for the level. I believe it was um, used actually in a, a Stuart Copeland anthology, like a greatest hits collection. That's the strength of, the, of, of this track. It was called Rain for it, um, for the actual proper release. I still call it Jack. I don't know why I call it Rain. There's no rain here, it's just it's fire everywhere. Why would you call it Rain? Makes no sense, goddammit. I probably missed a bit of gems along the line, but what the heck. 319 at the moment. Uh, what the heck. Uh, go down here, slow but surely, be careful. You always miss the gems on these stairs. At least I do, anyway. Um, but here we go. Dragon number two. This is... Revilo. Revilo. Something like that. Any advice before this battle? Advice? Hmm. A wise dragon once told me, aim high in life, but watch out for flying boxes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've lived my life by that motto ever since I freed that dragon. I was just like, you never know when a flying box might pop out just like now. Oh my good lord. So here we go. He's Jack in the Box, hence Jack. Literally is Jack in the Box. Um, I love the fact that he just he just runs away from you. I mean, I can totally relate to that as well. If, if, if I had a dragon chasing me, like fire and everything, I just I run away. But like bloody, yeah, I'm getting away from that. I don't want that. Oh no way, Jose. <laughs> yeah, it's just like yeah, he do doesn't really bother to fight. I mean, he throws a few boxes along the way, but other than that, he just you know does his own thing. There we go, and he just dies like that. And he gets loads of purple gems. 425 should be three more up here. Huzzah! There we go, and we just finished level with Jacques. And it's look at it. It's a such you know. Ah, oh, the skies are a fantastic, vivid colour. It, I get such a thrill every time I play that level. I almost get a bit sad whenever I have to then go into the returning home portal. And so I'm, I'm thinking I'm like about three, no, seven hundred gems short of getting into the, the, the portal. Portal, the balloon. The balloon is what I'm on about. The balloon. Yes. Um, because I've been considering I might do like a speed one, a sparrow, like from start to finish, just getting the basic bits. That's another video idea for now. But yes, so Jacques is my favourite level in Spyro. I hope you have enjoyed that because I loved every minute of it. There you have it, my favourite video game level from my favourite video game of all time, from probably my favourite console. Just because it was my first console, I'm always going to love it. Thanks for watching this, I hope you enjoyed it and I'm sorry, really really sorry about the lack of videos recently. I promise that Harry Potter will be starting up again soon. I've gotten um, a week off uni, it's reading week next week, which is also known as stay in bed all day week. <laughs> but I'm going to be using that week to just catch up with YouTube and get things going again. And it's going to be a hive of activity on this channel. New videos, new stuff coming all the time. What I want to know now in the comments is, what's your favourite video game? And if you've played Spyro Dragon, if you're lucky enough to have played it, what's your favourite level? Is it Jacques? Or is it another one? There's plenty of good ones to choose from after all. Let me know in the comments. Oh, and please give this video a like. I know it might not seem like much, but believe me, it helps me out so much. So please do just give me a cheeky little like and subscribe if you haven't yet. I promise there's loads of great videos coming your way shortly. And of course, if you want even more madness, you can follow me on Twitter at ZeppelinG993. Another little link there for you. So many links, but you'll love them all. I promise. See you guys soon.